War for the Planet of the Apes, was it the right title? No, because I was expecting more war. Thank you. Like, maybe it should be called Great Escape, The Great Escape of the Planet of the Apes. Okay, so we're on the same page. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of that movie Angelina Jolie produced. Unbroken. Yeah. This, to me, yeah. was Planet of the Apes, Unbroken. Yeah. Caesar is back in the cage. Yeah. Not very warlike. No. Like, let's see. How did it open? It, it basically opens with... So at the end of the last movie, we get told that that the human colony had made contact with a group of soldiers in the north. Yeah. And at the time, I wasn't sure if they were being truthful or not, but turns out they were being truthful. And so the this group of human soldiers are have come down south for reasons. For reasons. And uh, it's, it's confusing off the bat because this group of human soldiers has apes with them they've got a they've got some gorillas and they've got some chimpanzees working with them to navigate the forest and they lead an attack on caesar's encampment and they yeah. think that the, the the soldiers are like oh, i guess this fighting's gone on for what five years or so and the, the idea is like, oh, Caesar's dead. No one's seen Caesar. So Caesar's dead. So now we just have to go clean up all the, the rest of the apes. And then this group of soldiers runs into Caesar's encampment, finds Caesar. And Caesar's like, we've kidnapped. There's only one. There's like three or four human survivors from this attack. And as a show of good faith that I want to be done fighting, I'm going to let these guys go. And then they go. Yep. On horseback. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. This was a good setup. I mean, that opening fight scene was amazing. In the woods, going uphill, densely, um, dense shrubs or ferns or whatever else. You have apes on this little wall of sorts getting shot and they're losing people, followed by a huge garrison, if you want to, of horses, this massive cavalry. Yeah, a great fight scene, a great setup. And I was like, oh my gosh, we are going to get Black Hawk down or something with apes. But that immediately goes away. I think it's interesting in this one that we have a little bit of family, but I don't know for me if there was enough setup to be emotionally connected that when bad, evil general Colonel Woody Harrelson comes back into the cave and starts shooting people up and we have some of Caesar's family dying, I don't know that I cared enough. I don't know that I had enough connection. But what did you think? Did you feel like they set it up right? Probably hard to say because yeah. when you've got a movie where really everyone's talking in sign language with the exception of Caesar, it's hard to – like, of course, I feel for his son because his son was a pretty big component of the last film. Yeah. His wife, though, hard to feel for her because it's like we don't – we haven't really interacted with her beyond the fact that she was – sick from childbirth in the last movie. Yeah. And Woody Harrelson's character, like also not a lot of connection to him at that point either in the plot. He's just a, a soldier with face paint on and he could just be just one of the, uh, one of the, any other soldier. Yeah. But it isn't until after the fact that we realize, Oh, this guy's like the guy, the main bad guy. And so maybe, maybe it wasn't the best execution of the execution of Caesar's uh, son and wife. Yeah, but it certainly, it, I think what they needed to do was they needed to like, Caesar begins the movie in a place of wanting peace and he needs yeah. to get to a place where he wants to just kill everyone again. And I, why you don't start the movie in that place, I don't know. And then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so this one says 15 years ago in the intro scroll. But that must be wrong unless this is directly – yeah, we'll have to look at a timeline again. But they said of the last two years, this has been the fight. Maybe the last movie was only 13 years. Oh. I don't know. Regardless, they're playing yeah. with the timeline on this one. But to your point, if we saw Caesar drop Koba and get a little darker of you're not my kind of ape, okay, sometimes you got to spill a little blood. And obviously do, because they've been killing a lot of these soldiers who are then attacking them. It's weird that we don't see either 
forceful, vengeful, out for blood Caesar the entire movie or most of the movie, or peaceful, embattled Caesar who doesn't want to kill but sometimes has to. It just feels a little mixed and mangled the entire way through. Yeah, and I agree with you. The colonel would not go down a rope through a waterfall to kill somebody himself. He's the colonel. What you had such a good chance for another like the big tank, the other big bad guy to go do the killing. But we don't have that. At least for me, when Caesar goes off to distract the army to let his people escape, which again is half-baked, we don't see that pay off, we don't know what's happening, but he goes with Maurice and his small band of just the boys. It's the crew. It's the yeah. the good bonobo, he, Maurice, another good ape. Rocket. Rocket. There we go, Rocket. We have him reaching an encampment that seems deserted and immediately killing a guy, which he had to do, but immediately killing a guy and wanting to leave this sickly girl behind. So again, it just feels a little muddled as far as character development and cohesion of letting people go. He loses somebody. There's a dying young child, and he goes, not to leave her. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly, if this was the moment where I was like, I don't really, I don't really know if, if war is the best title here because the apes. Caesar basically says to his group of apes, like, "Go, my, go leave. Like, we found a place f- where we can go and like live that isn't here in the forest." And he's like, "And leave me behind. I'm gonna go. You do whatever." And they're like, "Oh, but Caesar, you're our leader. You can't leave us." And yeah. Caesar's like, well, "It's too bad." And then, so then he leaves and he does, then you've got an Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas moment where his friends, Maurice, the orangutan and the gorilla and Rocket, the bonobo show up and they're like, we're going with you. We're going with you to Mordor. (laughs) And you just accept it because it's fun. And I think, I think Maurice is probably one of the best, one of the better characters throughout the entire trilogy. They play the orangutans as these creatures of wisdom and Mm -hmm. silence and peace. And like, so it's fun to see the interaction between all these characters, but it certainly is not war. No, it's <laughs> infiltration, <laughs> subterfuge on the planet of the apes. Yeah, it's just not war. Wait, even the poster, I just I remember the poster being iconic, even though I hadn't seen it. Caesar on horseback in the snow with a gun. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Here comes. Dirt, dirty dozen or otherwise, Caesar is going to be kicking ass and taking names. It just, I don't know what it is about storytelling, and I don't always appreciate it. I don't like the hero getting kneecapped at the first instance as a way of filling the middle of the plot with mental fortitude. Every single yeah. time we see Captain Kirk in Star Trek, he's getting his ass handed to him. And I don't understand why that <laughs> has to be the feature. We have him in chains. Again, just prison life, prisoner of war, Caesar, getting whipped, getting beat. No one's getting fed. Other apes are getting killed and whipped, and he takes the whips. I'm like, Prince of Egypt? Okay. Moses Caesar? Fine. <laughs> Let my people go. <laughs> Call it the Prince of the Planet of the Apes. There's just <laughs> there's other things at play. And Woody Harrelson's a great actor. I think Woody Harrelson is just like faceless badass with no heart. Yeah. It's hard to watch because his stank face is just silly it's like when the kid doesn't get a cookie yeah just a really big bottom <laughs> lip and i'm like somebody do something different make it more jokey make do something else uh, yeah I so i don't know if that was the i don't know if woody harrelson was the right casting for that yeah. right because because yeah. basically his character is a sociopath yeah because the whole point of his character having such a reputation amongst the apes and the humans is because there's some there's something happening to the humans where they go in Caesar and his group go into this little empty abandoned village. They kill the man. They find his daughter's yeah. mute, can't speak. And there, and then they find buried some bodies that were the same, like they couldn't speak. And so the humans of course are panicking about like, Oh, what's happening yeah. and what's happening to us. And Woody Harrelson's character you know, tells us the colonel tells us the idea is that though the virus that spread through all of humanity and all of us left are genetic genetically immune to that, but the virus changed and mm-hmm. the virus is making us 
stupid. The virus is making us less than human. The virus is making us an animal. And I guess my unfamiliarity with the original trilogy is that the humans were mute. I didn't. I don't remember that. It was only the it was only the humans that came out of the spaceship that were able to talk. Yes. And so this is kind of the beginnings of that. Mm-hmm. Is this idea that the the virus changed and is affecting the brain in a way that humans just can't communicate verbally anymore? But the colonel, in a fear response to that, instead of quarantining people off and trying to find a cure, he just kills them all. Yeah. He's just like, nope. I. I'm a hammer. Everything I see are nails. We're just going to, we're just going to kill it all. And uh, so he gets his reputation of quasi religious leader with a lot of the American flags and kind of the alpha and omega symbols that were put on things. He has this, like, he's more than a colonel to these people. He's like a quasi religious figure to these people. Yeah. The alpha omega sign was great. Cause it's a callback to the original films in which the apes are praising this Alpha and Omega, which was on the nuclear bombs that kind of started the whole thing. I just watched it. I know it's my current lens, but it's only been seven years. Just seeing Woody Harrelson as the leader of the incel army boy camp was very hard to watch at points. I'm like, there's few females, if any. There's a few gorillas. And then it's just dudes. And I just know, I was like, those shower drains are clogged. There are crusty socks everywhere. But in addition to that, there is no good coming from this camp. There's no doctors, right? There's no yeah. medical science or anything else being done. And again, it was weird to see Caesar, who we believe to be like, oh, he's the leader of the planet of the apes. But he's really not. <laughs> he's the leader of a tribe of apes who's trying to get the hell out of there. And so we have other humans coming to attack Woody Harrelson, the Colonel and this group of humans for atrocities they've recently committed on other human encampments. And it's just kind of Caesar caught in the middle, learning to escape and trying to get out of there before everything explodes. So it just feels weird at times to have our protagonist acted upon more than being an actor, which I feel like it was. Maybe a better title is war of the humans on the planet of the ape. Yeah. (laughs) Last war of the human on the planet of the apes? <laughs> yeah. Two things. One, I think there's a conceit that all the apes that were captured are, it's a work camp, it's a prison camp, right? So yeah. they're being, they're using them to build a wall yeah. full of lumber and rocks to keep out something when we later learn that that's the oncoming other human army. But then the first thing that other human army does is attack by helicopter. Thank you. Therefore, negating the need for a wall entirely. But even worse, Caesar <laughs> points out that wall's not going to do anything. He knows. <laughs> also, gasoline does not last that long, I don't believe, just sitting in the ground. I have many questions, no. but I guess it's the military and they have other things going on. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's helicopters and it's surface-to-air missiles and artillery. And I'm just like, Woody, buddy. Why did you keep your base on top of a munitions depot and then build a wooden fence with a power? To your point, it's a little bit of plot armor. It's just like, here we go. We got to keep them busy somehow. There were other. I don't know. Maybe you can like, I don't like this, but lean into the. He's a sociopath. He's going crazy. Like he yeah. he's he doesn't make any sense, and people are afraid of him. And. His, his, the fear that he projects into people is what his greatest tool is to get people to do what he wants. And yeah. what he wants is insane. And I don't know if that's the best plot device in the no. world because then it makes us as an audience question why anything is happening. Like I'd rather as an audience, like understand why something is happening in the plot and accept it and be like, Oh no, that makes sense. Instead of being like, so they built a wall and then the enemy attacks with a helicopter that can fly over the wall. Okay, 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 okay. No, I, I got it. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're, it's okay. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have liked to either not see helicopters and just have mm-hmm. it be a Helm's Deep moment of, okay. Yeah. Or tell us some something more. Give us a MacGuffin that's just believable enough. Is he sitting on top of nukes? Does he have nuclear yeah. ICBMs with launch codes and a launcher? Okay, great. Is that what's in the depot? That makes more sense. Yeah. He Maybe protected. that's why these humans are so intent on storming this place is because the crazy man has the has the worst weapon that we could possibly conceive of. Give us a new code. And I know it's a little tired at times, but it would have been a little better rather yeah. than 
has lots of gun. Lots of gun explode. Avalanche covers yeah. everybody. Humans yeah. frozen. The, yeah, just a few moments of unbelievability and yeah. frustration. What did you think of Steve Zahn's character? <laughs> First off, Steve Zahn casting is fantastic. The most ape-like, yeah. Yeah. I have to ask, and I did not realize this. Whoever did the NFTs first just took him as the bad ape, right? <laughs> that is NFTs. The beanie, the jacket. I'm like, some uh, loser watched this movie and was like, I bet I can make a JPEG and sell it to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because he calls himself bad ape. This is the yeah. NFT. Okay. Fun and a good way of describing how other apes, not from San Francisco Zoo, got the ability to speak and were losing hair and everything else. But a weird character. I don't know. Yeah, no, he was weird. I I thought he was very endearing. I mm-hmm. love Steve Zahn. And I think definitely gave us a window into, oh, there are other people, there are other apes out there besides this little group of apes. Yeah. And so that was a good way to describe that. But also it was for a little bit of humor. A little Jar Binksy, yeah. A little Jar Binksy. Probably better than Jar Binks, but yeah, his he's very much not a he's not a war ape. He's not a war monkey. He doesn't no. want to fight. He just wants to survive and have friends. Yeah, that's it. He's just a good time guy. He's a good time ape, and that's so his time. kind of his reaction, his reactions to everything that that Caesar or Maurice or Rocket want to do is just like, no, really, okay, yeah, I okay, okay, I, I, okay, fine. I'll go do this. And so as an audience stand in very well done, I thought it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I definitely feel like you have a moment where Maurice finally makes a noise and makes his like orangutan howl, which was great. Mm -hmm. But I think in general, he was a fun character. And again, great, great voice acting, voice casting. I don't, it's weird. They brought him in this movie and not the other one in my mind, to some extent. And now knowing that the Planet of the Apes is 100 years past, we're not carrying any of these characters over. Uh, Not a missed opportunity, but just I wonder if they would have done better to have him in something else. I don't know. Uh, But I am interested to see where they're taking these next three films as far as increasing the scope and the breadth of how far have these apes reached and what are they like? Are they all getting along? Do they all speak English? When are we going to have Spanish speaking apes? There's some questions. I'm like, (laughs) you can't tell me that in a San Francisco or Northern California or Southern California zoo, everybody was speaking English. Come on. (laughs) That's true. That's Uh, true. I I didn't think about that. I I know we're being made in Hollywood and whatever, but I'm like, can we have some, some apes speaking something else or throw a couple of, Spanglish words in there. Anyway. Yeah. What do you think about the ending where they make it to the, the promised land and then Caesar dies? I guess that's a fine way for Caesar <laughs> to go. Uh, if we're saying Caesar is Moses, Caesar should have died before reaching the promised land. Yeah. He should there should have been died. something left there to be desired of like, oh my gosh, he had to go into the gray and, and battle himself and he doesn't get to see the paradise. He gets to die before just hoping with good hope for his people to have something. Uh, yeah, it, it was a nice way to ride off into the sunset for seven years and plan the next movie. I'll give him that. But I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I'm okay with him dying, but I think you're right. I think if he would have if he would have died earlier, his death would have been way more impactful. Like to yeah. blow up the bomb that blows up the, the base or whatever, to blow up the gasoline tanks or hell, even this was, this is a little bit of a tangent, but the weirdest thing was that the gorilla who was on the human side, um, who does a, a turn to save Caesar by rocket launching the human into dust so I'm that Caesar could dust. then, so then Caesar could then throw the grenade at the gas tank to blow everything up why didn't the gorilla just shoot the gas tank thank you why didn't the gorilla just shoot the gas tank he's staring at it it doesn't make too many steps it's too many steps also a gas tank that explodes to that level of blowing the wall out and then completely destroying the base 
I just don't think our buddy Caesar would have survived the shock wave and fireball and impact. No. <laughs> and then he's crawling through the tunnel, and I was like, I understand we have to suspend belief, but at a certain yeah. point, <laughs> Caesar just would come out as a kebab. Like he has just yeah. been charbroiled. Yeah. At the very least, I think what would have been a really good death for Caesar would have been okay, he's destroyed the base, and now the other human army is coming in, and he just knows he's toast. Yeah. And so what he does is he triggers the avalanche and he just lets it engulf him and the entirety of the army so that his people can get away. I think that would have been way more impactful rather than having him just like be shot and then making it there, but then bleeding out anticlimactically while his son is dancing around. You love Last Jedi. Uh, Let it be a Luke moment, a Luke-ish moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. To have everybody else escape, one final sacrifice from the guy who's been struggling with inner demons and outside demons. But instead, yeah, I just, I mean, everybody gets away into the sunset. I don't know. Yeah. Not my style. Not my style. Okay. Of the three, how do you rank them? Dawn has to be number one for me. Yeah. It feels the most complete. It feels like it has the best vision and characters and, and conflict, as well as dialogue and a great cast of humans and apes. I think I still would go war second, <laughs> just because for me, Rise was just a little too silly. But I talked to somebody yesterday who said it was Dawn, or yeah, Dawn, Rise, War, and he had War third, which was interesting to me. That is interesting. What about you, though? No, I would say Dawn, War, Rise. Yeah. Even though War has some problems, I still Still really love the characterization. I love Andy Serkis. I love, like, damn, the CG is just so good. Like, they're so believably apes. Yeah. The motion capture performances are so magnificent. And yeah, it struggled in a lot of ways, but I still think it was a good movie. That just had a bad title. If you could have titled it something differently, we would have expected what we got. Concentration camp on the planet of the apes. Yeah, there were other ways to title it. Yeah, and then you're right. The one with James Franco is just a little too too silly, a little too Curious George-like. Not a bad movie, but also just like, I'm okay if I don't see it again. Yeah. It, it was. It existed to set up everything else. If Matt Reeves had one chance to make a Planet of the Apes movie, he would have made Dawn. Yeah. That, that is his movie. And I think if he only had two, it would have been Dawn and War. It would not have been Rise and Dawn. I think yeah. that they understood there's an opportunity here with the IP, and at least by 2011, it was enough of a guarantee you could just drop a couple movies and make a couple hundred million dollars if it looked right. And they proved mm-hmm. that. But I think... The other part is having good critical reviews and people really loving these movies and just showing up. It's it's a good sign. And I know the new one has done fine numbers, as far as I understand. I don't think it's breaking records, but I know it's good. I wouldn't mind if they keep getting to five or six hundred million dollars on the end of their run and they keep making them. Wouldn't yeah. be bad to me. No, I'm excited. I, I'm excited to see it. I'm I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited to see it and then talk about it. Yeah, let's look real quick. Opening weekend, 56.5 million opening. Not too bad. And so far, we're at 129 million. So not bad for three days at this point we're recording. So that was its budget was 129. Oh, sorry, sorry. 129 million at the box office so far. It's already made much. Okay. Let's see what yeah. the budget was. A budget of 160 million. So they so started recoup two thirds of its budget, basically. Yeah, and that's just the earliest release was <clears throat> in Japan and some of Asia on May 8th. Yeah, which is why your international numbers are a little higher. But yeah, as it just came out last weekend for us in America, that's a pretty good start. It's a good start to Hot Monkey Boy Summer. Hot Monkey Boy Summer is here, and we're here <laughs> for it. We'll have a recap on that when we go and see it. Everyone go see it in theaters or watch all three movies on Hulu and get caught up. 